Hey everybody, I'm doing this video a day early, a little off my schedule, but kids are home tomorrow, so I do not know what the day is going to look like. Um, disclaimer, this video is not going to be super positive. Um, might be a little bit of a downer, but um, I always love videos about what I'm currently going through, so this video is not all sunshine, nor is narcissistic abuse recovery, so this is the reality of it, I guess. Um, I'm talking about when you have a down day, when you're off, when you feel crummy, when you the wind is out of your sails, and... I also want to have a disclaimer here saying that I love, I love lifting people up. I love encouraging people to live their best lives and to achieve their potential. Um, but I'll tell you, it's so much easier to see that in other people than it is yourself. So I had to look a little bit of this up just to make sure I was giving you the right information, but here's what's going on. So I'm having an emotional flashback. It's so annoying. Um, you're probably with me on this. Uh, CPTSD is complex post-traumatic stress disorder. This is a result of narcissistic abuse. Uh, when your parent is a narcissist, you most likely will suffer from this for a long while. And if you're like me, you're doing so much work to overcome this toxic programming and conditioning. But I'll tell you what, nothing heals like time. It's the last thing you want to hear, because if you're like me, you're super impatient. And my attitude is like, these people had such a negative impact on my life for so long. Like, they don't deserve to hurt me anymore or to have a negative effect on this awesome life that I'm living. That being said, an emotional flashback can last from seconds to weeks the I want to do more videos on this but today I'm just kind of venting um, an emotional flashback is you can be triggered by anything it can be as seemingly insignificant as a look it can be a person authority figures are a big one in eliciting this negative emotion from you because your parent abused their authority growing up in you know your life when you were growing up so an emotional flashback is different from post-traumatic stress disorder in the way that there is no visual component which is what makes it hard to identify which is why I had to actually look it up myself because I was like it's so, it's just like this ominous, heavy feeling of pessimism, negativity, you're shrouded in shame, depression, guilt, all of it. All of the terrible feelings that were instilled in you as a child, they all come rushing back and they just take you down and you don't even see it coming. So this is what is happening to me, I guess, right now. Hopefully I'm coming out of it. But I'll tell you what, Friday was Valentine's Day, and it was the best Valentine's Day ever. I had the best day. I was over the moon. My husband was home with me. We sprung our children out of school. We all went to lunch together. It was so fun. It was awesome. I was just treasuring every moment. I absolutely treasure my husband, our beautiful children. I know we both do. And... Friday was awesome. I was over the moon on a high. And yesterday, this started with me. I just got so 
taken down so sad and negative and I was like what the flip like it makes me feel bipolar to be honest with you I'm like why am I so erratic and emotionally unstable and I have to tell you it's super awesome like this community and having an ally that is also a fellow victim or you know social media Instagram whatever you reach out to these people and it's like everyone validates each other and provides much needed compassion that we never got throughout our lives. So anyway, I reached out to my friend who actually said she experiences the same thing. She is a victim of narcissistic abuse as well. And she says, sometimes I feel like I can take on the world and life is awesome. And then other times I'm scared and overwhelmed and I wonder how am I going to make it? So that's essentially what I'm going through. Um, it started yesterday, like I said, I, I feel better today. But this is, and where I am at with the toxic duo, my terrible strings to the monsters that raised me. By the way, my hair is back to crazy curly because it's my husband's favorite. Trying so hard to work with him here. Anyway, it's not what this video is about. <laughs> so, um, what I'm saying is that this emotional flashback. You know, I did start when I started to learn about narcissistic abuse recovery, and I was reading the Pete Walker book. I was able to identify these emotional flashbacks, which I have often, but I had no idea that's what it was. So I am physically compromised, as you know, in this wheelchair. And before I initiated no contact with the toxic duo, they came to our house for Christmas last year or something. And I was putting together like appetizers or something at the table. And just them showing up, it impacted my left side. I like my hands were just not functioning. I just kind of experienced a type of paralysis, numbness, something of that nature. And my friend that also has CPTSD said the same thing. She exhibits physical symptoms. She said that her one side of her body was totally paralyzed when she was around her toxic parents. Um, it's crazy. It's very grossly underestimated how severely this impacts us. So with all my heart, I know, I know I, I say what I mean and I mean what I say. I know that life happens for us, not to us. And I sincerely mean that to anybody watching that has been through the ringer with this stuff. We come out better than how it all started because we have a gratitude we're grateful we have an appreciation for genuine love and you know an amazing life that's waiting for us and I'll say that my ex was a narcissist that I was engaged to he discarded me and it was the best thing he ever did for me ever because I am married to my soulmate husband, the love of my life, my best friend, and we have three beautiful, amazing, incredible children that we love and treasure and cherish together. And we have an amazing dog. So life is incredible. It's absolutely amazing. Every moment of every day, I'm grateful. That being said, I have experienced my fair share of challenges the disability right off the bat I am in a wheelchair and that sucks and I do make a correlation between that and the emotional trauma I have endured my whole life it certainly hasn't helped things also Joey our son passed from brain cancer in when he was three years old in April of 2013 that again all this being said I'm so grateful. I'm so blessed. I absolutely treasure this life. I am beyond blessed. I don't have words to express 
how grateful I am for Joe, our beautiful children, this amazing life. I thank God every second of every day. And I'll also say that going through brain cancer with Joey was the most devastating, agonizing, darkest thing anyone could ever experience in their life. And I would never wish that on my worst enemy on anyone ever. So, but that being said, Joe and I really rely on each other and actually even grew closer together because of that. Some people, it splits apart, but Joe and I really bonded. We have, you know, the same perspective on things and we love and appreciate each other. We love and appreciate our children. And it brought a lot of things to light. That experience that we went through with Joey really showed us who's going to be there for us when the chips are down. And I'll tell you what, the toxic duo, no. The flying monkey, golden boy, narcissistic, older brother that I used to deal with, no, not around at all. So Joe and I are so grateful that we are Joey's parents and the experience that we suffered through absolutely brought us a new perspective and a deeper appreciation than we already even had. So everything we went through with Joey was horrific and painful and devastating. But I'll tell you what, having toxic, horrible parents is harder to deal with to be honest with you, it's like, and here's the difference in the two scenarios. With Joey, Joe and I had each other. There was, there is true, genuine love present with my toxic upbringing, with the toxic duo and the whole dysfunctional unit. There's no love there and it still hurts. You know, I'm going to be 40 years old. I just learned about this last year and all of the knowledge, the information, the community of people that support one another is incredible. It's truly amazing and I'm so grateful. Seriously, it's, it's amazing when you finally learn what has been going on and you're able to put everything into, like fit the pieces together and see it for what it is. It's amazing. But doesn't make it any easier, right? We still have to grieve the loss of the parent that we never had and, you know, siblings that are not supportive. And the whole, the whole thing is so sad because my toxic narcissistic mother absolutely triangulated the whole family. I don't have a father. I don't have a brother. No one has any meaningful relationships with each other, even the extended family. So Joe and I pride ourselves in respecting and appreciating the people in our lives that mean so much to us. We genuinely have a profound appreciation and gratitude. And that being said, we're also very intolerant of people that have a lack of respect and, you know, we vehemently oppose superficiality. And you probably do too. If you grew up with a narcissistic parent, you know, everything was surface level, you know, as deep as a puddle, just shallow, the ultimate facade, it, it sucks. So you probably pride yourself on being genuine and authentic. And Joe and I do absolutely. Joe's dad was an, a narcissist and his brother, younger brother was as well. Joe had an amazing mom, but what I'm saying is that we have such a profound appreciation, respect, and gratitude for the good people in our lives. So when people come into our life that are not genuine, that do not have authentic intentions behind their actions and behaviors, it sucks. And I think that triggers me right back to an emotional flashback. It just puts me in such a bad place 
And to be honest with you, I'm disabled and I don't get to interact so frequently with the outside world and, you know, society in general, I guess. I am so beyond blessed with my wonderful friends. Um, inevitably, though, you will have to deal with people that are not at the level that you kind of have grown to expect from people or your, to meet your standards. And what I'm saying is people are going to fall short and they're going to disappoint you. And this is something that I need to come to terms with myself. At the end of the day, I'm just in a, a shitty spot right now. And it's okay. Is it like, I was talking to my husband about this who does not have CPTSD at all and God bless him. We are so transparent and with one another, with everyone, we wear our hearts on our sleeves. We hold nothing back ever. So he said, it's okay to be down, you know, just don't stay there. And that's what I always say to people. It's okay to like not be like sunshine and rainbows all the time. It's fine. Experience that. Feel that. You know, let that grief, let it, feel it so that you can let it go and move forward from it. So that's what Joe said to me. And then my friend that has CPTSD, she was like, yeah, I feel the same thing sometimes. But generally life is incredible. Life is amazing. And once we're able to pinpoint these narcissists, and all the damage that they have done in our lives, we're able to move forward from it. And this is just part of the process. This emotional flashback, this down day, just part of the process. It sucks. It's not fun. Nobody wants to experience this. But it is what it is. So I'm just letting you guys know we're going to have down days. And probably an emotional flashback. Like I said, it could last from seconds to weeks sucks um I'll do more videos on emotional flashbacks because there's so much to this it stinks um but we're bumped and we're bruised but more than anything we're blessed we're rising above this horrible toxic treatment um it's sad because if you're like me you come from nowhere basically I I'm so grateful for Joe and our children, but I don't have parents. I don't have a sibling. I, the extended family is all just as dysfunctional. Nobody communicates or really supports one another authentically. So this is what it is. This is the reality of narcissistic abuse. Um, but we're bumped and we're bruised, you guys. But more than anything, we're blessed. If you experience this, leave me a comment or something because... Like I said, I feel like we all just need to support one another and I'm so grateful for this community. And once we identify what's going on, like being able to identify an emotional flashback is a very critical element to overcoming it. You know, part of an emotional flashback also is the amygdala hijacking where you're in an over amplified state of fight or flight which leads to amygdala exhaustion there's so many components to this like I did video about dualistic thinking catastrophizing I think I said that right catastrophizing it's when you just think black and white you're like oh my god what am I doing where am I going I'm such a failure and you have all this negative self-talk this negative programming ingrained within you and we're trying to override it. Like, I do everything. Like, I'm trying to overcome subconscious programming. So I do emotional freedom tapping, you know, when you do the thing to your, on your head. Like, all that. I've listened to binaural beats. I meditate. I do it all. You could read, you could read all the affirmations in the world, which I do as well. But at the end of the day, you're still, like, this, this crap is going to crop up because it's so deeply embedded in us. Like, if you have a narcissistic parent, 
up until the age of eight, it was fair game. Like all we were doing was recording and absorbing everything. We had no autonomous thoughts. So whatever they did to us, whatever they said to us or how they made us feel is ingrained in our psyche. And we can override it and reprogram ourselves, but it's going to take a while. And that's the reality of it all. Anyway, you guys, I just wanted to put this out there. Just keep it real. Um, I love and appreciate you all. Please like, please subscribe if you are into this video. See you guys soon.